<laughs> Chuck, Chris, this is for you. You know what it is. Hey, yo, this is Dash. Yeah! yeah. This is Dash, and um, I'm gonna sit back and we're gonna talk for a couple minutes. Well, just quickly. So, I'm gonna put this video that I'm recording now in the beginning of a video I started shooting three days ago. So when I started shooting the video three days ago, I really didn't know what I was gonna be doing, and I didn't know exactly how I was going to do what it was, but I knew I wanted to film it. So I hope you can appreciate it. And I'm just gonna apologize now because when I started, I thought that it was gonna be faster, but I, I felt that I filmed a lot more in detail about how I actually go about cooking almost entirely for an event. Um, so now I guess without further ado, let's take you to three days ago. Hey yo, this is Dash. And uh, here we go. You guys are gonna join me. This is probably gonna be a multi-part, well, maybe not multi-part, but multi-day video. So what I have to do today is I am cooking for a um, my son's old school. The um, the principal there at the school saw me out and about, and she asked me was I still doing uh, was I still doing barbecue, and if so, could I cater an event for them at the school? Sure. So this is a symposium for about 80 people, plus or minus. Um, so let me show you what I have. All right. <clears throat> so first and foremost, I have. So what they ordered was. 15 pounds of brisket, 15 pounds of pork shoulder, 15 pounds of chicken. Then I also have um, some potato salad, a couple different types of potato salad. I have some coleslaw and then I also have a macaroni salad. Also have buns for them and then a last minute request. I got a request today to get them some sodas and water. So I'll have to run out and get sodas and waters either tonight tomorrow or on the morning of the event, which is Friday. Today's actually Wednesday. So, um, at this point, obviously, you see that these things are raw. Oh, one of the questions I get all the time is, how much food do I need to cook X number of pounds of whatever, okay? My usual rule is to buy 50% more than what I need. So, the briskets here, this brisket, 13.27 pounds, this brisket, 12.6. This pork shoulder, almost 17 pounds. And this one is almost, well, or that one's 15 and a half, okay? Then the chicken, this chicken is six pounds there. There's five and a half pounds there. There's six and a quarter and six and a half. Now with the chicken, I'm gonna have a lot of overage, but the problem is if I bought two packs of breasts and one pack of thighs, it wouldn't be even enough for me to kind of, you know, chop it up and do what I need to do with it. So I end up buying four packs um, because if I were just gonna be doing like eight pounds of chicken, you know, cause there's six here and here's uh, six here. So that would have been 12 pounds and then my yield would have been about seven or eight pounds of chicken. So because of the fact that I need more, I need, I'm looking for 15 pounds of chicken. I had to buy more chicken than I needed. And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, sell the rest of it off. Um, same thing with the pork shoulder. The pork shoulder, I'll probably yield, um, I'll, I apologize, I'll probably have about a 30% loss. And then with the brisket, I will have up to a 50% loss almost every single time. Um, a lot of times um, there'll be extra bits of fat in here and on the top that I trim off because, you know, folks don't like that up here. Here's another good example of a lot of extra fat all in here that'll get trimmed off, okay? But there you have it. So hopefully that answers your questions about how much food you might actually need when you are cooking for someone or for an event um, as far as how much meat you'll actually lose. So 
let me get to the next step. The next step is me going to be seasoning all of this, all, all of this meat, and then I'll be starting my fire. It's still actually daytime. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to season my food a few hours ahead of time, and um, I'll get my fire started shortly, and I'll get cooking so I can get this thing, get, get this stuff taken care of, and uh, cook, get it cooked ahead of time for my event. All right, thanks again. See y'all in a bit. All right, so I've been asked before, how do I get the food out to my garages? Just like this. Typically, I stack them all together and I carry them all at one time. But tonight, since I'm not going to the gym, I figured I would take three trips as opposed to just one not that bad of a walk actually but I do tend to make this trip 10 to 15 times a night when I'm cooking uh, depending on how much wood I have to put into the fire and how much food I'm actually cooking so all right so being a bit lazy and I don't really feel like making three trips. So we're going to take the last two. This is the pork and the uh, brisket. Whew, and it's heavy. So I'm um, taking it out to the garage now. So uh, all of the food is down into the garage. And someone asked me not too long ago about um, seasoning meats and things like that ahead of time. And I think I answered it in the uh, Ask Me Almost Anything video. What I end up doing is um, I typically only season things ahead of time when I'm pressed for time. So tonight, because I'm trying to get my cook started a little early, I came home with my kids after school, seasoned the meat. So then later, um, after my wife and I get dinner, what I will do is I will simply start my fire and then I don't have to spend the hour or so um, getting the meat seasoned. What I can do at that point is take it out of the refrigerators. I have a couple of refrigerators out in my garages. So I just uh, season everything, wrap everything up, and put it out in the garages so that when I am uh, ready to get the food into the smoker, uh, it'll be right there, pretty much in the garage next to the smoker, and um, I can go ahead and get it started. All right, so there's a question about, or an answer about seasoning food ahead of time. Okay, so it's a couple hours later from when I first spoke to you about this whole event and doing this whole uh, kind of behind the scenes for it. And if you don't know who that is right there, that is Bessie, the uh, Kick A Smoker. YouTube has seriously come down crashing hard on my uh, videos and uh, ad revenue. So we're gonna keep this really PG. So this is Bessie again, the Kick A Smoker. All right. And uh, if you haven't or don't know, Bessie is a all wood smoker. Well, <clears throat> so there's the firebox there and I'll back up a bit. This is the cook chamber and this is a warming box. Uh, the way Bessie works is the fire is here, the fire travels underneath, goes, exits here, comes into the cook chamber and then exits there and goes out the chimney um, outside. So, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get Bessie full of wood, get my fire started, and uh, I gotta hurry up and get that started because it's getting late, all right? Thanks. Well, I'll put you in the tripod. You can watch me work. Okay, so uh, you just saw me get the fire started and it's going and it'll be a full ablaze in there in probably 10 or 15 minutes. 
and uh, you can see the smoke coming off of Fessy. So what you hear is uh, water going into the bottom of the, the water pan here and it is actually almost full and what I usually do is uh, I put the water in there I try to put the water in there as I'm starting to fire to help keep some of the smoke down but I open the door for the smoker so that it can draft properly um, the easier it drafts the, the easier it is to start the fire so let me show you what I have going over here these are the air intakes if you don't know or haven't met Bessie before these are the air intakes usually when obviously when I'm starting a fire I open them all the way up but when I start cooking I usually bring them both down to about that point and uh, that's more than enough uh, I talked about it quickly this is a warming box obviously that's the fire box the fire the heat and smoke travel up under there and go in there's a hole right there and it goes underneath of the tank and then out up over here as you see the smoke coming from this way it comes across and the uh, chimney is back there so once the smoker comes up to temperature I'll scrub it down and uh, rinse it out or rinse it down again and uh, we can pretty much get our our cook started it should be um, probably about an hour or so before I can start cooking okay so I've got my fire going and you, as you can see the uh, smoke is coming off of the uh, smoker pretty well and that I've, this thick white smoke is not the smoke you want to see um, when this dissipates and the smoker comes up to temperature and once it gets over 250 degrees or so this thick white smoke will turn into steam uh, obviously because that water that's down in the bottom of the uh, water pan there will be boiling off and uh, when you see that when you don't see any smoke and you see just a clean steam and a thin wisps of uh, white smoke or, or excuse me blue smoke uh, that's when she's ready and uh, while I do at this point is just wait I'm actually gonna go back in the house have my dinner and uh, be patient so you see this thermometer on the right is at 125 degrees this one on the left is just slightly over 125 degrees as this uh, as the heat and smoke come from here and again they go under and come out here this side is going to heat up faster but because the firebox is over here and it hits this side of the uh, the cooking chamber and there's slightly less water over on this side because the uh, the water plate is angled actually down this way <clears throat> so this is where it dries out first the chamber eat, uh, heats up pretty evenly um, the only difference is obviously between the bottom shelf and the top shelf the uh, temperature difference that way and while I'm thinking about it you've never seen inside of Bessie before so there's two uh, shelves in here um, I think the, the shelf on the bottom is 30 inches deep by I think it's 42 and the top one is 28 inches deep again by I think 42 so um, there's plenty of room inside that smoker there. Um, I've had at most 16 turkeys inside of the smoker uh, at one time. And I usually can fit uh, four, I've, I've fit six to eight briskets up at the top, getting creative on how I put them in there. Um, and the most food I've had in here at one time, I had 120 pounds of pork shoulder on the bottom shelf and I had 40 pounds of uh, chicken uh, at a time on a top shelf and uh, that was pretty much full to capacity again it was 120 pounds of uh, pork shoulder down on the bottom and I had uh, 40 pounds of chicken up at the top just to give you some uh, cooking um, capacity all right I'm gonna close this up let it come up to temperature and uh, 
I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I know it was rather difficult to see, but this right here, coming from the, uh, this is black stovepipe I have connected to uh, Bessie. That's steam, that's all steam. Um, come over here and it's hot. She is, she is moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back inside and uh, throttle it down. Okay, so I could tell that the smoker was well over where I needed her to be. So you see, she's almost at 400 on that side and uh, just passed almost at 375 on this side. So what we do now, what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> open the smoker up. Now, anyone who does any smoking for any long period of time will tell you that just before you open the door on the smoker, you take a breath and hold it. You do not want to inhale that big plume of smoke as soon as you open up the smoker because it's just gonna be hot and smoke and you know you'll never last as a barbecue if you're taking in a whole bunch of deep breaths as you are cooking so here we go now you see the uh you can hear the water down there is boiling Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this scraped out and cleaned up real quick. And um, the best thing to do um, to clean your smoker is to get it good and hot the way that it is and steam clean it. So let me see if I can show you guys how I do that. So before I show you the uh, steam cleaning process, I wanted to show you inside the firebox. So you guys saw me load this up and actually right after I um, finished with the last video out of the smoker, I added a few more logs just to stuff it plain full because I know that what I do is I let it get good and hot. Now, because I opened up the firebox door, the um, heat in the smoker is going up slightly and I'm gonna hurry up and get the smoker cleaned out. So I'm gonna close the door. Handy brush. And all I'm doing is scraping off the visual. And I'm going at an angle here to work with the, the expanded metal that's down in here. All right, so once I broke everything up, like I said, steam clean. It's kind of like deglazing the pan. A little anticlimactic because I left the smoker open for a little while longer than I probably should have to show you guys what I was doing. And one of my kids must be in the shower or something because my water pressure is low. 